And I'm joined now by Ann Coulter, someone I'm sure you recognize, author, speaker, television personality. Welcome to Phoenix. Thank you. It's great to be here. We dialed up a nice day for you at least, didn't we? Well, it's a little chilly. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're expecting, <laughs> what, 80, 85, something like uh -huh. that? Um, you have a real talent, don't you, for riling people up? I do. It's a gift. <laughs> oh, it's a gift you're calling it. When did you first realize, when you said something that somebody said, whoa, and you said, hey, I might have something here. This Was it as a child? <laughs> um... That's a good question. I mean, I, I suppose I should say I don't do it to rile people up. I just don't mind that they get riled up. I'm going to say what I think is true, and the fact that everyone is yelling at me is not going to make me back down or change my mind. So you believe the things that you're saying here, oh, all yes. these things. Okay, good. So let's go over a couple. Your 11th book is Adios America. My 11th New York Times New York Times. Seller. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, you spell out some things. Like one thing you say is, we, there's, we've seen quoted a lot, 11 million illegal immigrants in this country. Right. You say closer to 50 million. That's yes. the first I've ever heard that number. Where do you get that? Yes, well, it's explained in only about two pages of my book. And I really recommend that people read the book. Donald Trump read it. It is setting his whole campaign. And now Ted Cruz is picking up on it. So if you want to understand what's happening, you got to read this book. Okay. It's short. It's sweet. Shorter than it looks, 150 pages of footnotes on the 100 or uh, the 30 to 50 million illegal immigrants. The 11 million figure we keep hearing. For one thing, I was suspicious because it's been 11 million for a decade now. What? Right. Nobody's been coming. Um, and if you look at it, all the groups are relying on the exact same surveys, which are census surveys, which do pe depend upon illegal aliens answering questions. Right, and you, answering they don't necessarily surveys. answer those. Truthfully, is what so you're saying. So a few years ago, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make it not too boring, but like I say, if you want more details, it's in the book in just like two pages. Um, back in 2005, a couple of Bear Stearns analysts looked at this and said, you know, they're advising people about something important, their money, and said, this can't be right. Um, these people, you know, have, have struggled, left their families behind, traveled in flatbed trucks to get to America. They're not going to answer it illegally. They're not going to answer a government survey. We're going to look at other things. We're going to look at remittances back to Mexico, money that immigrants here send to their families back in Mexico, and various other factors, such as certain illegal alien hotspots, the um, increase in housing permits, and the increase in high school graduation rates or school um, attendance. So you're basing it Back on those data. In, well, I'm basing and with it on that their data, study. Okay. And in 2005, they concluded there were 20 million. OK, then add to that these two Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporters for Vanity Fair and Time Magazine, um, Barlett and Steele. They have their own entry in Wikipedia. They're very impressive investigative journalists. They spent a year investigating this. In 2006, the very next year, they said, after spending a year at the border looking at this, that, and the other thing, they said three million illegal aliens are going to come here in one year. I underestimated that, assuming that some percentage of them go back. Assume right. instead of three million a year for the past de decade, it was only one million a year. That puts us at 30 million. Wow. You got all that in two pages of your book? That's impressive. Yes, with more details. I'm <laughs> sorry. I hope I'm not boring writing. everyone, but you everyone. Say that. But people, you'll notice Donald Trump, God bless him, because he read my book. He never exceeds to the 11 million point. He and always he says, says well, more. some people say it's more. I think they're right. Okay, so let's say that there are just 11, lower. And you're saying, I saw a tweet that you put out just as early this morning. And you said, uh, looked at some ways, deporting 11 million illegals in uh, quotes is a bargain. So you looked at some ways to deport all the people that are here, I'd love to hear that because that, as a journalist, I'm thinking, <laughs> how could that happen? How could you round up and deport that many people out of the well, U.S.? Well, first, the actual tweets I was sending out were tweets of which is what most of my book is, by the way, it's like law and orders and forensic files. It's all of these hideous stories of gang rapes, child rapes. I mean, different ethnic groups have different sorts of um, predilections for crimes. Uh, and I go through the various, the various groups and the various types of crimes. And, you know, there have just been these really heinous um, and you child. were quoted as saying that Mexicans were more likely to rape children. Is that correct? It's, Did I quote you correctly? Thing. That's a big thing. You will find a lot of it. And you will find the media. The main point I'm making in my book is how the media hides it. This is why you'll always see these tweets, you know, like uh, today. It was a, just from today. Montgomery man arrested for raping six-year-old. And then, you know, you have to read down. Usually for a lot of the stories in my book, I had to wait for the court transcripts to find out they were immigrants at all. Um, but, you or know, illegal aliens. in fairness, naturalized citizens commit 
heinous crimes as well. I mean, you know, American well, citizens commit bad citizens. crimes. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, that. Not my bad. Not interested in them either. Um, no, there are a few, but um, it would be like bringing in tribes of cannibals and saying, well, we have Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean, yeah, um, I, I think it's pretty clear this is much more common behavior. Look, with the Albanians, it's credit card fraud, Nigerians, credit card fraud, Russians, human smuggling. Look, People might say groups. that's a very racist, that's racist talk from you. No, because you're, you're basically saying this race of people or this nationality of people commit these types of crimes. Well, a predilection, yeah. And look, the point is, if you're going to be bringing, uh, you think honor killings? Do we have honor killings in this country? Clitorectomies? Of course, cultures are bringing in different behaviors. And the point is, we are used to dealing with certain types of crimes. Um, look, all of the credit card scams, none of these are committed by the, the, the Medicare frauds. I have a page of the Medicare and Medicaid fraud, frauds. You will not find an American name in there, and the paragraph goes on for two pages. Well, let me ask that you was again. from one month, February 2014. My point is... We're kind of is, meandering around. No, 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 but let me just okay. get to the point here. America isn't prepared to deal with different kinds of crimes. We're used to dealing with certain sorts of crimes. And when you add up the cost to get to your question, how, why deporting? Not why, how. I'd love no, to know that, how. No, but that isn't what I was tweeting about. So I'll oh. get back to your question. But what the tweet was, it's a bargain to, de to deport, whether it's 11 million or more likely 50 million. Um, the costs in welfare costs, immigrants, both legal and illegal, far more likely to be accepting welfare. The co how do you count the cost of the facial reconstruction surgeries, of the girls who have been raped at six years old, that the families destroyed by people murdered for every immigrant criminal? That it just creates wave upon wave of destruction. How do you add up the money for that, for the English as a second language instruction, for the schools, for the hospitals? I mean, you could make some estimates, but with the media and the government hiding immigrant crimes, it would be hard to get a definite We don't number. hide it here. We report it here. Um, I salute on you Fox for that. Phoenix. I salute you. <laughs> and we it's also very... report citizen crime. <laughs> N uh, well, n everybody supports ci uh, reports citizen crime. The way most newspapers, and it's described in my book, I mean, it, it mostly is an attack on the media and the government for hiding it. And it's, I mean, I have. I've never been told to hide anything. <laughs> I have in a series of chapters years in this business. titled "Spot." No, I'm not accusing. No, yeah. I'm just saying. I hear that a lot. It's funny on I Facebook too. You. You, you guys suppress this. I, nobody's ever in my entire career told me to suppress anything. And frankly. I wouldn't do it if I was told to. No, I think that's great. So let me ask you really quickly, because we're running out of time. How, how would you deport chapters. all these people? How would you deport now, all these people? Now, as for the how, oh, well, yes. as God bless Donald Trump, he mentioned it, Dwight Eisenhower did not we using 1950s technology. I mean, everyone acts like, for one thing, there's a time limit. Well, no, you start your deportation force, you start deporting them, well, and done, they well, get the You message. knock on the door? I mean, how, how, do you, how do you find them? Look up Dwight Eisenhower's. It was called Operation about... Wetback. He started at the border. The troops moved north. They knew the businesses and they knew the homes. They went in. They deported them. And by the way, Donald Trump, I mean, he's right. Yeah, you should go after the criminals. I'd go after the law-abiding ones to send the message. Law-abiding. They're not law-abiding if they're illegal immigrants. They get the message. And then you do what Mitt Romney was saying. Enforce E-Verify. Make sure only Americans can get jobs. They get the message. They Are leave there on the road. Any good illegal under immigrants? Dwight, under well, wrong question. Under Dwight Eisenhower, for every one he deported, and he deported in the 1950s more than a million immigrants, ten more left on their own. I think they'll get the message. Um, are there any good illegal immigrants or immigrants? Um, that's not the question. The question is: Is it good or bad for the people already living here, including immigrants? who apparently decided to live in America, and not Honduras, not Bangladesh. They wanted to live in America. I want to live in America. Apparently, a lot of Americans want to live in America, or Trump wouldn't be doing so well. Well, they're not going to be living in America if we don't stop the mass immigration from very different cultures, from the poorest of the poor from around the world. Why would any country bring in people who instantly need our taxpayer assistance. We ought to be bringing in people better than us, not worse than us. I think us. most people would say that we do need to have some sort of a border policy where we can't have free access across our border. I think that's a very broad-based issue. But then it becomes, how do you deal with the people who are already here? Let me ask you about dreamers. Support the Let me ask you ones. about a, a two-year-old who's brought across. America's all they know. South Phoenix or Tempe is all they know. And so do we drop them off? Yes, their parents we do. can't Back in call. Honduras. 
We don't drop them off. We send them back with their parents. They didn't crawl across the border. They came with their parents. Their parents. But they're broke 20 the law. years old now. You know, well, they're you not know, with their parents anymore. Bernie Madoff's kids didn't too, do too well. If your parents break the law, you're going to suffer. It's awful. These kids whose parents are in prison, they have to grow up without fathers. That's terrible. Why, why don't you say, oh, you're separating families? You broke the law. You got to go home. We're not separating families. Take the kids with you. The kids weren't crawling across. They should have thought of that before coming. And Colty, you're going to be at the Future of Freedom Tour at the Scottsdale Center for Performing Arts at 7.30 tonight. So everybody can come and listen to you there. Yes, hurry. And you're good at riling people up because you actually riled me up a little bit today. <laughs> I don't think so. Nice I'm praising you. You, you report right. everything. Great. Thank you, Ann. Thank you.